Welcome to the Bookish Introverts Podcast. Join host Amazon bestselling author Brett Nelson and avid reader Melanie Dyer as they dive in to review books they've read, then chat with the amazing authors behind them. Quiet minds, big bookshelves. You don't want to miss it. And thanks for stopping by to listen to us on our podcast. Um, we know you have a lot of options out there when it comes to podcasts, so we are honored that you choose to jump in and listen to us on occasion. So we thank you for that. My name is Brett. This is Melanie, and today, uh, yeah, we're uh, today we're here to discuss Karen Kingsbury's One Tuesday Morning. I don't know. I, I've really once we started the podcast, it would just be a travesty not to discuss a Karen Kingsbury book. You have to do a Karen Kingsbury, yeah. She is just a powerhouse in Christian fiction. So very common name. Yeah, yeah. Is have you read any of her books? I don't know this that one? I have. Okay. I I couldn't remember ever reading I went through a list of her titles and they didn't really you know I they didn't really strike a chord with me the titles so I'm, I'm not sure I have of course you do tend to to really go I, I stick to I find an author I like and I have to read everything they've written I just, yeah it's everything I need all the things they ever wrote yeah see <laughs> and I'm on. I'm kind of the total opposite I, I kind of get bored with series books I continue the story for me yeah, I mean, you, you'd have read like 45,000 version. Uh, what's that author you talked about last time that started uh, like uh, in the 1600s? Gilbert, yeah, Gilbert Morris. The, yeah. Uh, forgotten. It. Winslow. The uh-huh. House of Winslow. Yeah. Yeah. So see, History, it, changing time. Yeah, and you Famous. like sure. historical fiction. So that's kind of your jam fiction. too. It is. It yeah. Is. But for me, I, I tend to get bored with series books. And so like, and I do read series books, but like, like, I'll read a book and then it may be three or four months before I launch into the next one because I just, by the time I'm done with the book, I want a new author and a new. You want to change a pace. Yeah, I want to change a pace. I don't so, want to change. Yeah, well, on some things I do and some things I don't. And I guess with books, I do. Um, yeah, so anyway. I uh, stick with what's familiar. That's yeah, yeah. Just how I roll. You like the comfort of liking what you like. I do. Yeah, yeah. I have read, I think. Honestly, I have not read a lot of Karen Kingsbury books. I've only been reading Christian fiction probably for about the last two years. Really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, one of my favorite authors is Mary Higgins Clark. I've been reading Mary Higgins Clark. Like when I was younger, I liked, uh, you know, what's the sleuth girl's name? Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew. Like Nancy Drew. Once I kind of felt like I was too old for too uh, just too old for Nancy Drew. The very first book mystery book I read was Mary Higgins Clark, and I very religiously looked for her books. As soon as they came out, I bought them and read them. So I, I, I you know, I've read every book in in hers. But yeah, I've only been reading Christian fiction for about the last two years. Uh, recently, probably last year, I read a Karen Karensbury book for the first time, Shades of Blue, I think it was. Um, so I think this is probably the second book the second of one? that I've read. Yeah. 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 This, I mean, I've seen her name a lot. Hadn't read a book? Yeah. Well, at some point, I want to kind of get... Since this is your first time to read her, I kind of want to talk about what you thought about it. Sure. But first, um, let's let's kind of give. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows she doesn't really need a big, you know, uh, she doesn't need a big intro. She doesn't need a big intro. But tell us a few things about her for anybody that doesn't know. So I, I did not know this. She was a sports writer for the Los Angeles Times, which I thought was interesting, and then wrote for the Los Angeles Daily News. And her first book, Missy's Murder, was based on a murder story that she covered in Los Angeles, Mm. which is, I just, I found that intriguing. That's, yeah. She has written or co-written almost 100 novels. Again, with the 100 novels, how do you people do this? I don't know. Um, 13 million copies of her novels are in print. Must be rough. (laughs) As an author, it must be rough to have 13 million books in print. Number one New York Times and USA Today bestseller. Mm-hmm. Last dozen books published, topping bestseller lists. Uh, Not just on the list, number one topping, on yeah, the list. Topping I mean, bestseller list, and that's hard to do. It is. That is not. Just, you have to sell more impressive. I'm yeah, just, you have to sell Mondo books to be number one on the New York Times bestseller. Yes. List. An interesting thing, I being an author, I have looked into what it takes to make the USA Today bestseller list and the New York Times. And you know, not everybody, even if you meet the criteria, to like. Like if you, because you have to sell so many books 
from, it can't be like all from one place. It has to be from assortment of online sales and brick and mortar stores. It has to be a combination and not everybody that qualifies makes the list. It's basically a, it's yeah, honestly, it's kind of a, it's kind of a popularity contest on if the people at the New York Times like you and want you to be on their list, which kind of sucks. Uh, There's a guy like me. No, well, me either. Well, and there's a guy, there's a, he's a political, he's a conservative political uh, commentator, Michael Knowles. Have you heard of him? I've heard that name. Love watching his show. Uh, He's, I I think he's with the, I'm wanting to say Daily Wire, but it may not be the Daily Wire. But anyway, he, he sold a book uh, that was about how conservatives are kind of censored in like social media and just in general. And he sold tons of books and, they refuse to acknowledge it. The New York Times refused to acknowledge it. So it's kind of a popularity contest of whether they like you and your content. Sounds like high school. Yeah. It's basically <laughs> like high school. Exact good correlation there. <laughs> Sounds like high school. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she has several things developed that have been developed into Hallmark Channel movies, mm-hmm. which I know you watch. Yeah. You watch the Hallmark Channel. Yeah. I'm not a Hallmark Channel. Although there there is one that I... A few, but not yeah a whole lot. Yeah. I think is the bridge, is that, is that, um, it, it's, it, it kind of took place in a bookstore. Yes. For some reason, I'm thinking it's called The Bridge. That's a really good one. You'd probably the like bridge. that. Yeah. Uh, the Bridge, A Time to Dance, and Maggie's Christmas Miracle. Didn't care for Maggie's Christmas Miracle. Yeah, like Maggie. The movie. I've never read the book. The book may be good, but yeah. It says here she's got a series... You don't have to read it. Baxter Family. Uh huh. The Baxter Family series. And it looks like. It just came out on prom. It is. Recently, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it looks like Roma Downey. Yes. Everyone's favorite, well, Angel. Top five favorite fictional <laughs> angels. <laughs> He's, there's Highway to Heaven. I mean, you got. True. I'm Gen X. You got you to gotta show respect for Highway to Heaven. Did Highway to Heaven have angels in it? Michael Landon was an angel. In he there. was an angel? Yes, I, he I, was an angel. I haven't seen Look it. Look at him. I haven't seen it since like 1980. Sorry, that's a girl. Is my, is that's that not a Gen X thing. That's a girl thing. Did, yeah, you, did was, you have a crunch? Okay. Did you have a crunch? Michael like, Landon? Mm-hmm. Wait, not a crunch, a crush. Yeah. You had a crush on him? Yes. Really? Yes. He fe- it feels like he's too have old to have a crush. It? I, not since Little House on the Prairie, My I guess. My first crush was Roy Rogers. There is not, I do not have a limit. Age is not <laughs> a factor. A limit. I don't, the, it's it's not an issue. So that's. Reese okay. floats my boat. I, I'll give you that. How I mean, can she Reese not? Would. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Everyone yeah. loves Reese Withers. Yeah. Um, so she has, uh, I I know she has three kids. Uh, she's been married. Roma and Downey while. does? No. We're back <laughs> on. Kingsbury. Okay. Sorry. Squirrel. <laughs> Yeah, squirrel. That was my fault. <laughs> Karen King's Mary. She has three children, and they've uh, three children with her husband, and they have also adopted three children. So she has six children all together. And I just found That's out recently nice. her son's an actor. He played, you know, the new movie that just came out, something like you or some, so, someone someone like, like you, someone like you. Her son plays in that movie. Really? I saw. Yeah, she, apparently Karen King's Karen, Karen Kingsbury has a podcast. I listened to an episode oh. uh, just this week. I listened to it, and she and Francine Rivers were talking to each other. Of course, yeah. So you need to look that up. And uh, it was uh, interesting. That sounds intimidating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I doubt either one of them are going to come on our podcast. <laughs> let's let's just keep our expectations into check. Keep our yes. I would like to think so, but you know, I'm not saying I'm above reaching out to Karen Kingsbury and saying <laughs> hey. But That's fair. we'll just. If she does, yay. And if not, we, we didn't expect too much. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, they were talking. Of course, you know how it is on YouTube. You watch one thing and then they show you everything yes. related to that. Yes. And the next video was her and her son talking about, oh. and she kind of talked about sort of their family, but she also, she mentioned that he was, uh, he's an aspiring actor. I think he's been in several things, but anyway, he, he's in that, in her new, the new movie. Mm-hmm. So, yep. Yeah. He makes me want to look him up. Though. You need to look him up. All right. Don't ask me his name. <laughs> I won't do it right now. Do not remember. Yeah, do not remember. I will do it right now. <laughs> so that's, that's her bio. That's her bio. That's her. Interesting. Yeah, I like her. Yeah. Yeah, I liked her. I'll probably, I'll probably reread more of her books at yeah. some point. I don't think. I agree. I don't. 
think she's probably going to be like a go-to author for me. Uh, I like her books well enough I may to, have to, to look into this Jumar. Baxter family. Yeah, and I actually have read one of her books. I, I take that back. I, I read her, uh, one of her Baxter series books is a Christmas book. And I did read that. I think it was either last Christmas or the Christmas before. Yeah. So I think I think this is the third book of hers I've read. Okay. So anyway, yeah. Uh, okay. So the subject matter, the staging, I should say, this the setting of the book. You know what? Before we get into the book, let's talk about anyone that is of a certain age that was alive at the time September 11th happened. You just that that's something you will never forget. No. So before we get into the book, let's talk about. Where were you the day that happened? What were you doing? How did what, how did it make you feel? I kind of want to, since since the book is about that, right. I, I'd kind of like to see sure talk about that. Sure, um, I was at work. Uh, I worked at J.C. Penney at the time. They don't open well. Now they don't open until like eleven, but they don't open till ten. But I was a day worker, and we had to come in early to make sure everything was stocked and things like that. So by the time the planes the first plane hit, I was out on the floor and we were all getting ready for the day. And there were, I wasn't able to leave the register. Uh, I was the only one there. And of course the break room is upstairs. So how did you find out about it? Uh, if well, you... people were, people were coming down from the stock room and I was getting bits and pieces of information and it, it was wild. There were, you know, someone bombed the Washington mall and uh, the White House is on fire. So a lot of rumors. There, I, I heard that a plane crashed into one of the towers, and I heard um, about a plane crashing into the Pentagon. But I also heard all this other stuff, and I'm just standing there going, what is going on? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And the weird thing was, we opened at 10, and there's always, you know, your your stay at home moms, your your senior citizens that come in and start walking. You know, they're walking the mall. Well, now the mall's open, so they can get. They walk through the stores. There was no one. No one was there. And it was really the weirdest feeling. I think now we're we're, we're like in. we're like people there, and then they left after everything happened. No, no, it okay. was just no one was coming in. I think because it would have happened before yeah. you opened. Yeah, the yeah. first plane hitting. Yeah. So it was just, it was a very eerie feeling out. Oh, so were you guys like, what's going on? I, my, my first coworker came in, I think at 1130 and I went up to the break room. And by then, of course it was pretty much done, but it was constant repeat on, on the television and everyone's sitting in the break room, everyone's watching. And it just, it looked like a movie felt like a movie. I felt like I was in a movie. I was like, this, this is not happening. It didn't feel real. It didn't feel real. Yeah. It absolutely did not feel Terrorist real. Terrorist attacks don't um, happen in the United yeah, States. This is, yeah. this is not something that's happened. I don't, I, and I told someone, I was like, this is, this is like watching a movie. It feels like I'm watching a disaster movie. Yeah. You know, cause it's like, you know, the it, independence day, you think of all the, mm -hmm. when they shoot and the buildings, well, I was like, this is, is this real? And then, of course, afterwards, it, it, it settles in and it's, it really is. It just, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. And I had, I was 20, 23. Um, I had just gotten married four months beforehand. So, over, I mean, over the next week, you know, there's a lot of things that come. You know, I was terrified. I was like, is he going to join the military or are they going to institute? draft is, is my husband going to war is mm -hmm. you know when you're thinking about all the people in new york city and you're thinking about the people in the, in the pentagon and uh, of course the plane that crashed in pennsylvania mm -hmm. it was just it's a very scary time it was a very scary time i have a younger um I have younger brothers and sisters that were just i was like what kind of world is this that that they're growing up in or suddenly mm -hmm. we're under attack it had to have been, I think the only people who could understand would have been the people who were alive during Pearl Harbor. Yeah. To have an attack. Yeah. That's pretty much the only, that was the only two times we've been attacked at that. In our lifetime, so to speak. Certainly in the last 
Yeah. Well, it wasn't even in the same century. You can't say that. But Because I don't think I was alive during Pearl Harbor. Well, no. But it's still... I feel like I was. Yeah. Yeah. It just, on that level, because that was, you know, thousands of lives. Yeah. Yeah. As well. Yeah. But... The atrocity of it was comparable. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, was... at the time, we didn't know. I mean, we knew a lot of people... Well, because you can't have two buildings like that that huge and right. not have a lot of casualties. But at the right. time, you know, it took of us course. a while to know how many people were actually. Of course. You know. And I mean, I feel like it's just a very human response to hope for so long because mm-hmm. they call it a rescue effort for forever. Day. Yeah. Yeah. We're all sitting at home thinking there's no way, but it's still a glimmer. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, the, the the tower, I mean, the first tower was up for, what, an hour before it collapsed? Hour and a half, something like? I think so. The, the first tower hit was the second one. The, the first one to collapse was the, yes. Because they hit, the, the second one was more in the, I think it had more. Of in the, the middle of the building. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas the first one hit closer to the top. Yeah. 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 There, there was that hope that, okay, they had an hour and a half to get out. So there was that hope that at least everyone below the impact right. zone were right. able to get out. But yes. nobody knew. But no one knew. And it's just, you know, you keep sifting and they bring the dogs in and it just. Yeah. It's not, you know, it's not a pleasant memory. It's not a pleasant memory for anyone. It's not. But I do think it's important that it not be brushed aside. I agree. Just because yeah. it's unpleasant. No. That's not how you deal with things. No. And I feel like in this day and age, people do that a lot. Nobody wants to feel anything. You know, everybody needs a trigger warning. Everybody needs, you know, and I'm like, and I get. And it, and it is good to to warn people if you know you're going to upset them. But yeah, there are some things that just need to be discussed. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, we're just, you just can't discuss, sigh away from everything. Yeah, we're not going to discuss the. Holocaust. We're not going to discuss Rwanda. We're well, and not I, discuss things I, like that. I, no one wants to hear it, but I mean, I want to hear it, but it's kind of important that you hear about it. Exactly. And I watched it. Uh, I'm not a fan of Dr. Phil in general, but I watched yeah. just recently, probably in the last couple of weeks, an episode where they were talking about the just the the trigger warning, you know, expectation these days. And he he says. You know, it's actually, if you're a person that has to have a trigger warning for every little thing, you're not in a healthy state of mind. You're yeah, you're not healed. Too much. Yeah. You know, he said people that are healed, you know, he said, we've all had bad things that have happened to us. We've all have things that we don't, you know, like for me personally, I don't really like reading about things that have to do with child trafficking. Now, I'm not triggered by it. I tend to, if I know that things are books or things th- that have to deal with that sometimes i won't read them yeah. but i'm you know but but he said you know he said there's there's a fine line between he he said if you constantly are just looking for a trigger warning because you don't want to feel anything emotionally then that's not healthy no it's not it, there's a balance it's not yeah so so where were you were you at work i was at work yeah where were you working I had, my silver spoon had not kicked in yet. And mother and dad, it still hasn't kicked in yet. And I would like to talk to you about that. To talk uh, to my parents as well. Yeah, no, I um, I lived in Norman, Oklahoma at the time. Um, and I worked at Norman Regional Hospital. I was a pathology transcriptionist in the surgical pathology department. So uh, I was at work and the, the, the tax happened. Hospital must have been an interesting perspective. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, it, it was, and, and I heard about it pretty quickly because at the time the laboratory and the, the, the pathology laboratory where I worked was undergoing major renovations and they had actually pulled us out of the main hospital and we were set up in huge metal, in huge metal buildings outside. Mm. So we were in a temporary lab at the, at that point. Right. And my office where I worked was right next to the break room where the TVs were. And so I heard pretty quickly after it happened, of course, you know, people were like, oh my gosh. But the interesting thing about it at the time, when the first one happened, before the second one happened, they were saying it was a small commuter plane or... uh, Yeah. And I'm like, this was a huge passenger 747, but like... 
that tells you how massive these buildings were that a huge jet could yeah. plow into the World Trade Center and everybody was talking about it being a small commuter plane. So that's when we first heard about it. That's what all the that's what all the you know the CBS, NBC, all those people that report. Right. That's what they were saying that it was a small commuter plane. Yeah, it was a small plane. Well, no one dreamed that a seven forty seven with all the technology. You know, everyone thought it was an accident. Yeah, at, yeah. At the time, well, and there's there there's a certain Navigation level. System. Yeah, and in New York City, there's like a certain level. I mean, you have to because of all the skyscrapers. Right. You know, so. It would have to be almost in in your mind. You're thinking it would almost have to be intentional. Of course, at the time, nobody really thought that because everybody thought it was a computer plane. It, it was really everybody thought it was just a, a mistake. You know, maybe some inexperienced pilot or something. So anyway, so we were at work, and of course, everybody was just in shock. You know, that something yeah. like that would happen, and we were watching when the second one hit. You were watching when the second. One hit. We yeah, we were watching actually yeah. when the second one hit, and I, I can remember. It was like a pin drop. I mean, it was so quiet. It was just, it was so quiet. And then there was this one guy, his name was Kevin. He was a part-time police officer. He was a histology tech in the lab, in the pathology lab, but he was also a part-time police officer. He, I remember he was the very first one to speak and he was like, guys, this is a terrorist attack. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I think, I think no. everyone was sure by then. Yeah, I, once he said it, it made sense. But like in my like, I never really thought that at first because I think because I was so stunned. I mean, a plane, two planes can't hit two buildings and it not be intentional. Yeah, that's yeah. One may be an accident, but two is that's a yeah. Di- yeah. And I just remember not. thinking, who who would do that? What kind of sick, demented people? And at the time. I was not a very worldly person and I had no idea who, what, Bin Laden, I had never heard yeah. of Bin Laden. What was that organization, the terrorist organization that they were part of? Like um, ISIS, was it ISIS? It wasn't ISIS. I had never heard of all those terrorist groups. It was, if you hadn't asked me, I could have told you. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, I, I just, I had never heard of all those groups. So for me, it was kind of a learning experience because. Yeah, well, you know, we're. We're kind of sheltered. Sheltered. Yeah. Uh, That was the end of, I guess, the post-World War II bubble Mm -hmm. that we had kind of built around ourselves as a society. I I mean, uh, uh, not to say that no one knew, you know, people who are into politics, people who are into uh, military, people who are interested in, but, you know, I had my own thing going on. I lived, I lived here. I was newly married. I have, you know, I had my friends and my family and that was just, I didn't care much about necessarily about what was going on in the world. Same. Other than, you know, I'd like to go there someday or Hmm. isn't this history interesting or, you know, stuff like that. And I'm not, makes me sound shallow. When you live in a small rural town like we do, it's easy to live in a bubble. It really is. It's very easy to live. And I lived in a bubble. Yeah. I probably still do compared to most people. Oh, I'm yeah. sure we do. Yeah. I'm sure we do. We live, we still live in small towns and mm-hmm. yeah, we enjoy our bubble, but we know more than we did. Yes. We, uh, we're a little more aware. We're, we're a little bit more world you know, um, weary, uh, weary, leery. Yeah. It's, it's weird to think about what life was like before. Yeah. And compared to like these, things, yeah. these, these things right here. And she's holding it for, for those that are listening. She's holding up her cell phone. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I forget. Yeah. Cell phones. I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't hardly know anybody who had a cell phone. People who had cell phones were usually business people. Uh, there were a few people who had cell phones for personal use. Mm-hmm. It wasn't uncommon. Yeah. But and it my- was more common to find someone that didn't, yeah. you know, just- Yeah have a cell phone it wasn't like a zach morris block of exactly so they, yeah they, they were a phone that was the size phone, of my... but it was uh 9 11 changed that all it of a did. sudden everyone had cell phones yeah i don't know if it was the the thought of saying goodbye or mm-hmm. you know because you had those phone calls from the plane mm-hmm. you had the phone calls from the buildings from the, mm-hmm. all these people who of course had cell phones these executives these uh, office because in a place like new york city it was probably more common it, yeah it hadn't trickled down to uh, us it as had much. not trickled down to us um 
I think, I, and now you can't find anyone that doesn't. No. Have a cell phone. Yeah. Everyone has a cell phone. Um, My grandma is 90 years old and has a cell phone. <laughs> Some people have a cell phone too young, but you know what? I'm not a mother, so Do I, you? I have no room to talk. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when I first got my first cell phone, it was for emergency use. Of course, when I first got my cell phone, it, it, it wasn't a computer. It, it's a flip phone. Yeah, you know, but it was really just a phone to talk on. You didn't, you know, for those of you that are younger, we didn't search Google and, you know, we did not have the yeah. entire world. It was literally a phone to talk on. It costs money to go on the web. Yeah. Well, see, I, I don't think my first phone even had the capability to go on the web. Uh, I um, I don't think, you know, and of course, when I did get a plan eventually that had it, I mean, it was so expensive, you know, you had to be very careful because, you know, I mean, you could get a $200 phone bill yeah. because they didn't have unlimited plans and everything. So yeah, I think 9-11 changed a lot of things. It changed so many things. The cell phones, the security at the airport, you know, I, I used to fly to visit my grandparents and they'd meet me right at the gate. Mm -hmm. You can't do that now. No. You cannot no. do that now. So it's, there's so many ways that it, it just changed everything forever. And it's interesting that she chose this, I, what was the publishing date? 2006? 2006. Yeah. Um, still pretty. It was still raw. raw. Yeah. Uh, and a lot and of people from the reviews I've read, a lot of people were really, uh, they felt like it was too soon in some of the reviews I've read. I can understand thinking that. Um, with hindsight, I don't think it was. I don't either. Yeah. Um, but I can understand thinking that. Uh, I thought she handled the whole situation very gracefully. She did not hold back, I don't think. But I thought she handled it well. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not. You I don't know, think and she handled the setting badly at all. No. Yo, know, and I, I, well I will say it was very well done. I when when I was going to, into it, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect because, for me, I mean, I I enjoy I to this day I I enjoy watching content like on YouTube. I love watching stuff about nine eleven, why it happened, how it happened. You know, because I we know a lot more now than we did back then. Yes. Um. So I I like to binge on stuff like that. So I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when I read this book because you know i still have strong emotions when i watch stuff related to yeah. because i know how i felt when it happened you know and it conjures those emotions so i was like okay this this may be a very emotionally stirring book but i but i i didn't feel the the pull the heart pulls that i kind of thought i would in the book and i don't know why i mean i did in certain parts but it wasn't as an emotional read as I thought it would be. I, I think it was the way she handled it. Um, it was handled mostly through, heading into spoiler ter territory here, um, mostly through the eyes of a firefighter. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's attacked with the mindset of let's go in here, let's get this done. I mean, he's scared. Mm -hmm. They're scared, but it's, it's mostly his mindset and get it. There's a job that has to be done here. Yes. Um, which, you know, the firefighters and the police oh. officers that were lost. That oh, what brave people they were. I can't imagine. Can you imagine going the up absolute, into that building? The absolute commitment and bravery that that took. Uh, yeah. Just. And we live in a day when police are so criticized and villainized and, and they, they just. Are. And uh, there, are, there are bad police officers. There, there are. are. Bad there are. You There's know, bad everything. Every occupation has its. But you can't talk about a story like this and not acknowledge the people. I, I, I mean, not many people would go up into that building knowing no. that there was a huge chance they, they would have, never come back. They, they had to have known somewhere that there was at least a possibility. I, I don't think they would have expected the buildings to come down. That was No yeah. one expected that. Nobody but still, expected that. going up to fight a fire like that, every time they fight a fire. You know, my, my husband was a firefighter. And uh, that mindset is just. It's kind of ingrained into you. Yeah. That even if you're fighting just a little fire, anything can Anything can happen. No, anything, anything can, can happen. go wrong. Much less a, you know, fire in a. In a story a, building. Yeah. Wow. But I um, think she handled it well. She did. The setting. Yeah. Um, and the mindsets. 
Uh, it was well done. I and can sort understand of thinking it was too soon, but looking back on it from 2024, I, I don't think it was. I don't either. Yeah. You know, and that was actually, I think that was pretty bold of her to embark upon a story at that was. point. Because you know... You know you're going to get flagged for it. You're going to get flagged for it. You're probably going to get flagged for it today. And then you're going to get the people that are like, well, you don't know unless you were there, you know, which is totally true. That's true. You you can't know. know. You can't know. So I I think it was a pretty bold move of her to to write that, knowing that she's going to receive some... Yeah. Not You'll catch flag for setting something on that day, even, even now. Which, if you're an author, so you're it, gonna you're gonna get negativity no matter well, what you write. You can write the best book in the world, and you're gonna get slammed for something. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So I think as an author, you just have to say, okay, this is, especially as a Christian author, you just say, you know, I'm, this is what I'm gonna do, and put it out there. Yeah. So the story revolves around specifically around two couples. Two couples. Now you you may have to help me with some of the finer <laughs> details because I can help you. Out. I've read this book like three weeks ago and I'm two and a half books into I've read two and a half books since then. So you may be a little bit more clear. So correct me if I say anything wrong or yeah. Uh, But it's from the, it's from the perspective of two different families. Mm -hmm. Um, Laura and Eric live in LA. I believe so. They live in LA. California for sure. California. Yeah. I think it's LA and he's sort of a, he works in a huge conglomerate. Uh, he's, a, he's an executive. He's a an, business executive. Yeah, a higher executive. Like I think he's uh, might be second in in his business in his company, second in charge. So so it's them. They have a son, a son, a son, Josh, Josh. Yeah, and then Jake and Jamie are are the other couple. Uh, he is a firefighter mm-hmm. in New York City. Yes. And so and then they have a daughter named Sierra. Yes. Okay. Younger yeah. than Josh. Younger than Josh. Now, I will say for Laura and Eric, I do not get, Eric was a total workaholic. Yes. Like he put work above everything else in his life before yes. his family. I don't identify with that. I, I'm not a work above everything else. I'm I'm sort of no. following the line of I have to work because I want to eat and I have to pay my bills. I've never been that kind of person. I, I, I don't, I don't know many people who have and again maybe it's because we're rural again i think that comes from where you're raised Mm -hmm. um you live you know some some jobs you have no choice but to work uh, long hours Uh, nurses and well firefighters yeah they pull long hours all the time um factory workers Mm -hmm. but to constantly be at the office and no, I need to do this. I need to do this. And I need to do that. And I, I, I guarantee you they're not getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. When I clock out, I'm like, yeah, I'm not staying. No. Yeah. And I guess if you're making, <laughs> hun- making hundreds of thousands of dollars, maybe that makes it more I, worth. Maybe I, you have to have something to drive you to yes. behave like that. There has to be something that is. I think that's my employer, but I'm not paid enough to live at work and to to, to completely be connected to work. And thankfully, no. we work for an employer. We work for the same place. Yes. We work for an employer that wants you to keep a proper life work balance. Yes, they're but, very careful. You know, there are mental health days. There are uh, vacation and sick days. And, mm-hmm. you know, we have workshops on making sure to maintain a proper life work that they don't, they don't want you to make your life all about, them. all about them. Yeah. That's and I appreciate that. Yes. That's not what they're after. And I, I realize we both realize we're blessed. Very rare. Yes. We're um, very blessed. I've, I've learned that through several interactions with other people and it's very rare to have that. Um, but and not just for our area, because there are places in our area that are big companies where you don't have the flexibility that we yes, have here. That's they, true. they they expect you to be devoted to them, and it's all about them and nothing yeah. about them. I could never work for a place like that. Yeah, no, I I mean I kind of have worked for a place like that. Yeah, it's, I guess it's I would fun. if I had to, but it's yeah, it's not fun. Yeah, you know, you do what you have to do. You you make the paycheck and wait and hope and pray for something better to come along. Yes, um, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, I think. Being in a smaller town setting, we maybe don't run into mm-hmm. people 
with that mindset too often. Well, yeah. I saw a car the other day and they have to have that mindset because I looked it up. I'd never seen one before. It's $90,000. <laughs> wow. Who spends $90,000? Y'all are insane. I'm just saying that's more expensive <laughs> than my house. Their like, car is... Right? It's like, what is a Revant? Rev- rev- whatever. It's electric. I'm not interested. No. And it's $90,000. You can keep driving in your electric car. <laughs> but not for long. Sorry. True. Someone's True. probably offended by that. Uh, probably. We yeah, we apologize. We are electric not here cars. to offend anyone. Electric cars just do not work in our area. You, no. There's too much driving to be done, and yeah. it's not a good idea. Yeah, yeah. But someone has that, and someone has a Tesla. Well, I mean, in New York City, you can, I mean, you can park on the street and plug in your car and go, I mean, right there yeah. on the street. It looks like a city. It works. And yeah. I think that's that's what happens. That's here. the you distinct. Know, one's in LA, one's in New York City. Yeah. Uh, not that. Jake was an orgaholic, but um, that's, I think that's where you're going to run into mindsets like that in mm-hmm. Chicago, LA, New York, Dallas, yeah. Austin, these, these bigger cities that have these big corporations and these executives making hundreds of thousands of dollars. I don't know if I made hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. I might work that much too. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. I don't know. I, don't know. I, I couldn't say, but yeah. I'd be willing to test that theory. Yeah. If, if anyone's interested. If anybody's interested. <laughs> How we'll, that theory? We have a great work ethic. I'm just saying. <laughs> we do. If you want to pay us hundreds of thousand dollars, we have a fantastic work ethic. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was kind of interesting. I just, I've never really been that devoted to a job, you know. No. I do my job and I do it well, but I'm not married to the job. Yeah. It's not the be all. There are other things in life that are more important. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep it in its proper place. But, I mean, I understand how he got that later on. I understand. That, mm-hmm. That's probably spoiler territory. But, uh, yeah, I don't I don't get that mindset. I don't yeah. know that I've ever known anyone. Really yeah. Which, ever. and it did play into the story because. Right. Okay, I don't think this is a spoiler. In the in the story, Eric had to go to New York City. Yes, to, to business to, trip. For a business trip. And he was working, and I can't remember if it was North or South Tower. Do you remember which building he was in? I don't remember. It's not the important. South Tower, yeah. wasn't it? Wasn't the South Tower the second one hit? I can't remember. Yeah. Maybe. Since I'm not from there, I don't really, I don't always, yeah, if there's anybody listening from New York, forgive us for not having. We yeah, we, we just, uh, but anyway, he, he was in the building, and he was actually in the building when the plane hit. I think he was in the building where the first one hit. No, he was in the building where the second one hit because they saw the smoke from the first. That's right. Okay. And then they were like, should we leave? No. Yes. And he and his boss wound up staying, even after everyone else in the office they were working in, you know, they were all like, well, we're leaving. Yeah, we're out. Yeah. And they tried to talk him into leaving with them. And he and his boss wouldn't do it. He did want to leave. But they wanted to get this one last business but track check action done. He was done. afraid of losing credibility in the eyes of his boss. Yeah. Which, yeah. sorry, I would have been like, sorry, dude. Oh, well, if if you, if you lose no. respect for me for this, <laughs> then I, see you later. Yeah. But then again, that yeah, man that wasn't place. paying me $500,000 yes. a year. So, yeah. Yeah, or however much. Yeah. So anyway, so that's how he wound up in the building. He He and his boss stayed because they wanted to finish this transaction and they wound up but he did wind up if i remember correctly he did wind up on his way down before after the second plane hit after the plane hit their building it became real was like yeah it's no i'm out yeah got a family to think of i'm out and the other guy was still disappointed yeah i i i'm sorry that's just plain stupidity that that's just it is yeah it is i mean even if you don't have a family which i don't think he did yeah maybe you don't have a family to live for what i mean where's your sense of self-preservation thank but, you yeah yeah you know i just, i guess i can't judge i don't know yeah i mean yeah unless you're there and but i i can guarantee again it's it's easy to say when you're not in that situation yeah that's true no matter how much money i made no i value my life more than that yeah you know for sure. And the, and the, uh, so we've got, we've got Laura and Eric and because of his workaholic ways, he has virtually no relationship with their son. 
None. Well, their whole um, family is very disconnected. And it's from very, each other. they're very disconnected. He and Laura have a very strained relationship mm-hmm. and they try to work it out and it's okay for a few months, but then it's just, you know, right back yeah. to where it is. And, and so she's one of those people. At the end of her rope. Yeah. She's one of those people that she's tired of being married to the man who's married to his job. Yes. Yes. And she misses. Understandably so. She misses the man that she married. She married. Because yeah. that's not who she's currently married to. Yeah. There's, there's been a fundamental change along the way. And um, he no longer goes to church. He doesn't want to talk about God. And that was uh, something that was a big part of their lives. Yeah. So I say, from what she I remember, yeah. she she did. Yes. Okay. So, and he, he was a believer. He just yes, wasn't putting it was. into practice. Yes. Is it, do I remember he correctly? He was a believer. They, they both were. Um I can't remember if it was when they were kids or just it, they say in the early days of their marriage, you know, mm-hmm. it, and, and faith is still a part of her life. Mm-hmm. And I think a part of Josh's as well. Um, yeah. Now there is there's... another part of their story that I want to get into at the end. We're going to do a spoiler zone. Yeah. And I remind me, don't let me forget. I, there is one part of their story I want to talk about, but I don't want to talk about it now because it could be a spoiler. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway, sure. well, so, you know, in contrast, what you have, you've got Laura and Eric and they're interacting and she's upset because he's not like at a birthday party for his son, which, you know, that really sucks. Yeah. Hang, he's, hang it up for your kid's birthday party. If nothing else, hang it yeah, up for that. Yeah. And, uh, there's another part to their story as well. Eric has a brother, Clay, uh-huh. but Clay comes to the birthday party and he's recently moved back. So he's finally seeing, you know, this older brother that he's looked up to all his life. So he's having to come to some realizations as well mm-hmm. that not all is well in his brother's marriage. Mm-hmm. And uh, so that there's that portion of their story as well. So in contrast, you've got on the East Coast, you've got Jake and Jamie who are very happily married, despite the fact that Jake is a firm believer in God. He's very strong in his faith. And uh, Jamie wants nothing to do nothing to do nothing to do with church nothing to do with god he is very patient with her he does not push her he does not pressure her he prays for her um which i'm a firm i like that you you never win people by pushing them and by guilting them that's not a good way to win someone to to uh, the lord you know on sundays he and his daughter they go to church and jamie does her thing, and then they have the rest of the Sunday together. Um, it it does not cause. I I didn't notice any strife. I didn't either. That it causes between them. I think he mentions there's there's a point of view, his point of view, for a little bit that he feels like she's holding part of herself back. Yes. From him, um, but he doesn't call her on it. Doesn't just. Very patient. Very gentlemanly. Jake's, Jake's the best. Jake is the best. He's an easy Jake's person to root for. Last last time there was a guy that was the worst. Jake is yes. the best. Yes, he Jake was good. The best. And I, I kind of want to delve into that for a second, if you don't mind. Uh, in Christian, well, really in all fiction, but in, in Christian, Christian fiction especially, you almost always have the trope of one person is a believer and one person is not. Yeah. That that's a very popular trope in Christian, and always more than likely, always it's it's the man, the man that's not the believer, and the woman is, and the man is a jerk. He's a bully. You know, he criticizes his wife. You know, for being a Christian, and 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 I really loved that Karen Kingsbury did not go there with that. Yeah, I like the fact that she kind of flipped the script and made the male the believer and the female not the yes. believer and i like the fact that she was very even though she wanted nothing to do and she was very clear i want nothing to do with god i want nothing to do with church but she didn't not you know she didn't try to you know put a stop to it she you know and she was even supportive of him taking the daughter to church and raising yes. her that way and that was felt like just a very breath of fresh air to me because i I feel like that that dynamic with when having a believer and an unbeliever has spouses, I feel like that's kind of a false notion in yes. reality because I know several people just in my personal life, and you may do too, 
where one's a Christian and one's not. And it's, it, it's a pretty loving relationship. There's, they're not bullish about it. So I feel like no. that's kind of a false notion. I get why authors do it because it's good drama, drama builder, but I feel like that's kind of a false notion in fiction. I agree. Fiction. I agree. And I have read books where a woman was an unbeliever and she's just very shrill and miserable and nah, she's a Karen. And she wanted to make everyone else as miserable yeah. as she was. Yeah. yeah. So it was nice to see Jamie is not that person. She's she's stubborn and she just doesn't just flat doesn't want to hear it. But who among us but, isn't stubborn in one way or another? Um but she's not she, she's not mean, she's not rude, she's mm-hmm. she's not I wouldn't say she was selfish. She's just a very nice person. She's a good yeah. mom, she's a good wife, she's a yeah. good friend. She's a good person and that it's, it's nice to see because there are plenty of people who are not Christians who are good people that are good people. They're yes. Good, good people. Honestly, some stuff don't believing. have to be a Christian to be a good person. Yeah. I know some Christians that. Exactly. I know some be- unbelievers nice. that are better people than believers. Honestly, it's true. it's true. It really is true. Sadly. Yeah. And as a Christian, I, we need to change that people. Yes, we do. We need to change. We need to. We need to do better. Yeah. So I also, when it comes to kids in books, sometimes I cringe because it's very hit or miss. It's very hit or miss. Some people do not know how to write kids. I hate it when people write kids and they talk like they're twenty years old and they're and they're six. It's like, have you never been around a kid, Mister Author or Mrs. <laughs> Author? You know, and it's like I thought she did a. Fairly good job of, of so. especially Sierra. Yeah, Josh didn't talk too much, but th- that went with his character. He was just very silent, but silent, moody. You yeah, know, as well, you and, expect him to be. Well, and he was very, you know, when Dad did try to interact with him, he was very, eh, okay. Yeah, he just he didn't care, as you'd expect. As you would expect, because he was basically an absentee disappointed, father, disappointed too many times. Exactly, he's been he's been disappointed too many times. Yes. to trust him yes. anymore. Yeah. So I thought she did a very good job of, she didn't make the, the son that's, that has the chip on his shoulder. She didn't make him too bratty and too unlikable. And I just, they were kind of written like kids. They were just did you like think, kids. what'd you think? Yeah. I thought they were written very well. Yeah. I thought they were written very well. Yeah. Okay. So Laura, she, she's the one that sort of was in the icky relationship with her husband yes and she had her you know we want to discuss her uh, moments yes because she is she is of the two women in the book she is the one that believes in god Um, Mm -hmm. she is the believer and she has her moments of uh kind of doubt why yes why 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 did this happen as you know pretty much everyone yeah in the country if not the world did Mm -hmm. Yeah, and why I was the happen. first question. Why, why, how, why didn't God do this? Why didn't, and you know, that's a question that you ask yourself whenever something bad happens. As you know, as a Christian, you know, God has the power. God can God do anything. The power. God can do anything. And Laura had several musings throughout the book of, she, you know, God could have caused those planes to not hit the world. Trade. Yeah. He could have made could have. Eric leave the buildings because as time went on just they just assumed he didn't make it because he right. never he never called home right. and so even though she was holding it through you know she continued to hold hope that he was still there maybe he was in a hospital and and was unconscious or or you know whatever but i did find it interesting that as a believer she kind of questioned you know god why god could have done this why didn't god do this and that tends to be what happens just in general life. But I think the distinction is just because God can't, God can do anything. God could have plucked those, those planes out of the sky. But the, the point is, and it's funny, the people that don't believe in God, that attack people that believe in God, they're the first ones that will stand up and raise their hands to the fist to the sky and say, your God, let this happen. But God gives every human being a free will to do, you know, he, we, we have right and wrong. Those hijackers knew that what they were doing was wrong. Well, I'm assuming, you know, in a, in a way, 
Yeah, they thought they were in the right. Yeah, they they yes. thought once they got done, they're going to go to paradise and have seven virgins waiting on them, and because that's sort of what their belief is. But but the people, especially the unbelievers, who like to use circumstances like that as a way to say your God is not a good God, your God does not exist. But the thing you have to remember is God does not usurp the free will that he gives us. No. He lets people, he gives them the freedom to carry out the, the evil yes. that's hidden in their hearts. And that, I think that's one thing that especially unbelievers either can't grasp or they just don't want to. Sometimes it's hard for believers to grasp. Yeah. And yeah. Just because you believe in God doesn't mean it's easy. And that's that was a good thing to see with mm -hmm. with Laura. And it's funny because <laughs> apropos of nothing, uh, I was watching The West Wing last night. It's a comfort show for me. I've just I've watched. <laughs> I've watched all seven seasons probably a bajillion times. Um, it was an episode where the president, who is a very strong Catholic, is angry at God. And uh, I'm going through a few things right now that I'm just like, really? And it's such a well done scene. And I was just tears pouring down my face. I usually cry on that scene because it's just well, it's well acted. It's well. And I know Martin Sheen who played the president. He, he said that he had trouble doing it because he himself is a strong Catholic and he felt because he's mad, he's mad and he's basically yelling at God. And we've all and, done that, you know, and it, it goes into this because she's, she's the same. I mean, she doesn't yell at God, but internally she's angry. No, she's angry at Eric. She's angry at God. She's, and that's just a very human thing. And a lot of people, a lot of people don't think that's okay, but I think it's okay. I, I think totally it's okay to think be, it's okay. It's a human. He created us. Yeah. It's with, a very human thing to be angry. Mm -hmm. It's hard God. for our finite minds to wrap around yes. the God, you know, the, and it's kind of cliche, you know, I, I don't know if this is a Bible scripture or if it's just a, you know, that God moves in mysterious ways. Is that just a cliche or is that actually in the Bible? I can't remember. I think that's just a saying. Yeah. That is such, a, I always hate that saying that, yeah. God, I mean, God, it be a Bible verse. Yeah. I, I apologize to my mother-in-law. That's yeah. a Bible verse. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've disappointed you. Yeah. Me too. Um, <laughs> yeah. But. God knows yeah. our our frail natures and he know he he knows that our ways are not his yeah and, and knowing the subject matter going into the book i was hoping that she would touch on that and she did mm -hmm. uh, there were plenty of people who at various times that you could see anger reflected in their point of view mm -hmm. and i just think that's a normal people should not be ashamed of being no no christian should be ashamed of being when, when it becomes a problem is when you don't let yourself let go of it. Mm -hmm. It's not going to do you any good to just keep it all in that place. And Eric, look at me, look at me go. Um, well, you know, and sometimes that's why non-Christians don't like Christians because Christians like to, you know, and I don't want to be, I don't want to overgeneralize, but there are some Christians out there that they work so hard to preserve that. Oh, I don't, I don't struggle. I don't, I'm not tempted. I'm not. Yeah. And that's, do that. yeah. And, that's why a lot of non-Christians don't like Christians because yeah. 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 Nobody, nobody's perfect. Not even a Christians. When, when someone lose someone, um, when something happens and you can't see your way out of it, when, you know, it's just, this happens and this, and it's just a landslide of stuff, just one right after the other. I think it's perfectly normal to be angry. Like I'm doing my best down here. And you know, am I doing something wrong? Have I not done enough? Is it? Yeah. You know, and the Bible says it's okay to be angry. Just don't sin when you do it. There's yeah. a, there, there's you a just, different there. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being angry. Just don't, you know, murder someone or something. Like exactly. That. Don't, don't murder anybody and don't lie. And exactly. You know, it's okay for me to get mad at you, but I cannot throw a brick at your head. That is wrong. Well, Yes, that is. No. And I would like to drive that point. <laughs> Please do not throw a brick at my head. I won't. Uh, but it's, a, I just, I'm sorry. I just feel like it's very important that people understand it's okay. Yeah. Um, it's okay to question. It doesn't make you less of a Christian. No, no. Just like 
having depression doesn't make you less of a Christian. No. That's not. Don't even get me started <laughs> no, on We're that. not going to get yeah. started on that. But it's, Churches need to do better on that too. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that she brought the anger into it because I think that's a very important thing to touch on, especially with something like this. Um, mm -hmm. It's okay to be angry. Just don't hold on to the anger. Yeah. It's don't, don't let it ruin you. Vent and move past and, you know, realize that you're not going to do any good by being angry. No. Yeah. It, it loves you anyway. It so destroys you. Deal with it and yeah. get over it. Yeah. Yeah. Which granted is sometimes easier said than done. Much easier said than done. But for your own self-preservation, you yes. have to find a way, you know, and, and sometimes you're only hurting yourself. The other way you can do that is to lean on God. And and when you're going through times like that, when you're at your lowest, sometimes leaning on God's not exactly what you want to do. That's not That's your not human nature. Not always. I've been in a place like that where thankfully I was raised by parents who instilled the importance of, of church and God and, and having that proper place in your life. And yeah, it's just, I lost my, I lost where I was going with that. <laughs> Girl, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, do you remember where we were headed with that? Um, we both well, had we a probably, blind moment. Yeah. We're sorry. Probably need to go on to um, Jamie and Jake. Yes. Who of course is in, the building because he's a firefighter mm -hmm. and that's what they, and I believe his station was basically right in the shadow of the towers, mm -hmm. uh, which I thought it was kind of weird that they were so long in getting called up Yeah, when they're so close, but yeah, I don't know how many, there's probably a bajillion fire stations in the shadow of the towers. <laughs> probably. You know, I, I can't, I've only been to New York city once and I, I actually went to the two towers, but I wasn't really paying that much attention to anything. But the towers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the towers were a commanding presence. Yes. I've never been there and seen them they personally. Were. We, we went the year the bomb went off in the, we were supposed to be able to go in, but the bomb that was set off in the uh, basement garage, mm -hmm. um, they weren't allowing visitors, in. but we did go to the towers. Yeah. Um, and they, they were, they were, it was just mind blowing to yeah. see, uh, how huge they were, especially for a little girl from New Mexico who lived in dairy land. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing I'd ever seen before. Albuquerque didn't have anything like that. <laughs> yeah. When you're, when you're from the sticks. Yeah. That, that was my big city. Albuquerque that's a... <laughs> my big city at the time. That was, well, LA what, a couple of times, but still. Yeah. It's, it's a definite culture shock. Yeah. Huge yeah. culture shock. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So Jamie and Jake. And they're past. Is they, that, is that did, a spoiler? Well, not anymore. So that's, I thought that was, that was interesting. There, mm -hmm. you know, Jake's going up and Eric's coming, coming down. down. He finally um, came to his senses and decided yeah, to Yeah, after down. he came to his senses and decided to leave and uh, he trips, hurts his ankle. I don't and think this is a spoiler. Hand reaches out to help him up. He takes it. It's a firefighter. It's Jake. Mm hmm and he, I, I guess his helmet fell off. Mm -hmm. Is that what happened? Jake's helmet fell uh, off. Yeah. Eric sees his helmet. He's got a picture of Sierra taped in his helmet. And uh, Eric takes note of that. It's strange the things you notice. When you're I, I didn't traumatic. question that because it is. It's odd. The things mm -hmm. you, that take root in your mind in moments of panic or mm -hmm. fear. I think it intensifies uh, yeah. the things around you. And I think they they exchange a few words. And then Eric's on his way down and Jake, of course, back on his way up. Hmm. And that's really, I'd say that's probably kind of the turning point in the novel. Because mm -hmm. at this point, we've we've gotten an insight into Laura and Eric. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not happy. Well, Eric is sure that everything will be just fine because Eric is oblivious. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jamie and Jake are happy. The, the fact that Jamie refuses to talk about God is the only real issue mm -hmm. in their marriage. But I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> this is where everything just kind of turns on a pin. Yeah. I think. And when I will to me. And I will say the first few chapters were integral to the story because you needed them. Yes, very much so. You need them. There there's not a lot happening. But you need the insight. And it was my least, yeah, but, and it was my least, the, like the first part of the book was agonizingly slow to me. Once 
we got into the action of the towers and everything for me. And that was probably a good, probably 50 pages in before. I would it, think so. Before yeah. that happened. Um, so, but it was, it was definitely integral for sure yeah. to the rest of the book because you need that backstory. You need that character development mm -hmm. or in some cases, non-development Yeah, to, uh, to see where it's going to, where people are coming from later on. Yeah. And where they're, and hopefully where they're going to grow or, yes. or, or not. Yes. You know? So the towers come down and of course everyone is, my husband in the tower was, you know, where was my husband when it happened? You know, Laura's like, did he get out? And Jamie pretty much is sure that there's no way he wasn't part of that. Because he was not the type of person that would have not, right? He would not have go, been going running out. He's the type that would have been running in. Absolutely, and he and, he it, and it his was, best friend. He was on shift. You know, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't like he was off, like so many were mm -hmm. that day, that and reported to yeah. their to their stations. Anyway, I know. I know there were several, probably most, if not all, off duty off, firefighters and police officers that were just. Like, Psh, we're there. Yeah. The call of duty. Yes, absolutely. I'm trying to think of a way to get into this without. Yeah, it's a slippery slope because you don't want to say too much. It's a slippery slope with this one. You don't um, want to mess things up for the readers. Uh, we can. There is mention later on the uh, marital. I, I do want to ask. I do want to get your opinion on something. I do want to. Okay. I think I know where you're going. Okay. There's a storyline in there. Yeah, I. Okay, there is a story arc of amnesia. Yes. In the book. And I was not a fan of it. I am not a fan of the amnesia thing. Now, it made sense with the story. She she did it very well. Mm -hmm. I have seen it too many times done. It was just, it just drags on and on and on. And it, it's it, melod it's melodramatic. All of, a, all of a sudden, everything comes to light. She didn't handle it that way. It, it was... A very well done, but I, I have to say, when I realized there was amnesia involved, I was like, oh, yeah, you got to be kidding me. Really? Yeah. The amnesia? Yeah. She did handle it yeah. very well. So er um, Eric. well written. Yeah. Eric. So does... sorry for any doubts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry for the doubts. It did. It did just make me kind of roll my eyes there. Yeah. When I realized what was happening, I was like, oh, man, not the amnesia. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so when he comes home, you know, he's in the hospital and they find out he has amnesia. The wife, was it Laura or was it Jamie? It, it was Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. So she, she gets Jake home. She gets Jake home. And, and he's hurt, burned. Burned. He has no recollection of who anyone in his family is except Sierra. Sierra, the daughter. Sierra. Sierra is who he remembers. So in an attempt to, I guess, help restore his memories yes she goes to his uh, private journal mm -hmm. and reads it and i did not like that as such an event and i get why she did it she she hoped you know uh, you know but, but not only did she read it she gave it to him and was like here this is your journal that you kept maybe this will help you capture remember what you can't remember i, but I, I was a little more eh, on that didn't stick out to you as kind of cringe part. I did not really have a problem with her reading the journal. I understood why she was doing it. Um, mm -hmm. Her husband was physically home, mm -hmm. but her husband was not home. Yes. And their story is they've been together since middle school and she missed her husband. It was basically like he was there, but he was actually dead. She, the person in her house was a stranger and she missed her husband. And I think her going and finding the Bible in the journal and reading it. I think it was a source of comfort to her. Um, I can understand that. I can understand why she read it. Giving it to Jake, that seemed iffy to me because um, the doctor said, you know, don't push. Don't mm -hmm. because come back then naturally. what he's doing instead of remembering is learning. Yes. I understand her thought process behind it. He's not learning. He's using what he's reading yes. 
Yes. Yeah. I think it confused things a little more Yeah. between them. But when I was reading it, I had the complete opposite perspective as you. I felt like she shouldn't have read it. She should have just given it to him and said, here, this is, really? this is your That's life. A- yeah. Yeah. Like I, I just like a journal is a very personal thing. It is a very personal thing. And I thing. just feel like she shouldn't have read it, even though I know her, my heart was in the right place. I just, I, I remember feeling very cringe by the fact that she not only went to his That's journal, she read it. Yeah, I just, I would have liked to have seen her just give it to him and say, yeah, okay, maybe this will help. I wonder if, you know, from a wife's perspective. Possibly. If that's, you know, my, my own husband was very badly hurt not too long ago. And, you know, if it had been any worse, he probably wouldn't be here. Um, and if he kept a journal, but he had amnesia, I'd probably read it too. Really? I don't think he's watching this or listening to this, but... Uh, I'm going to tell yeah. him. I'm going to tell him if he's got a journal, he better hide that thing better. I'd, I'd read it too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. If I was married, I'd be like, lady, you, you know, better not read. <laughs> I better be dead if you read my journal. <laughs> I would I would miss I don't, him. I don't keep a journal. but you know. I, I, I don't even keep a journal. Yeah. I don't know many people do, but I, I think I would miss him and I'd... I'd miss, she didn't go to it right away. No, she didn't. It was a few days. Mm -hmm. And I think it was just the torture of being, he's there. It was kind of desperation. Yeah, she's just desperate. Yeah. Just desperate. And you do weird things But I understand why you feel it's a huge, because it is a huge invasion of privacy. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, she's grasping at straws. True. Yeah. Doing whatever she can. Mm -hmm. But I think giving it to him i think all it did was complicate things Possibly, at the same yeah. time it also helped so you're right it, I mean... could, it could give <laughs> false memories yes it could yeah so yes. I, I can kind of see it from that point too reading reading all that it would be hard to distinguish what was real memories mm-hmm. and what what you were reading yeah but which is probably point, why the doctor said don't push it I, let it come yeah. back naturally absolutely but at the same time it was really a good thing yeah. Yeah. And that comes into play. Later. Yeah. Most um, people probably wouldn't have ever found that cringe, but I, but it, that for me, when I read it, I was like, oh, that is I so cringe. Yeah. I can understand. Yeah. Yeah. So there, they, the Jamie mm-hmm. had access to, was it Jake's dad's Bible? Jake, it's the Bible Jake's dad gave him. Yeah. On his first day. I like that. She, I like that she had that to lean on. Yes, first day, and that she started. eventually gravitated to that. Uh, uh, yes. So yeah. yeah, I thought that was a, a nice. That was a nice touch. plot point. Yeah. A very nice plot point. Yeah, and I know there is there is a little bit. Some people are like, Brett, and don't, uh, don't care for any mention of romance beyond the kiss. No, and if There's, you only put a kiss in, if you have to. There's yeah. there's a little bit more than it's not it's more thoughts than anything. There's nothing graphic in here. No, uh, at all. Brett mentioned that he did not care for that. No, it didn't really bother me. It's unusual to see sometimes. I think in Christian fiction when there's when there's romance. I've read a few mm-hmm. that have stuff like that in it. It doesn't bother. Me. It doesn't bother you. I've, I just, yeah, I, I did not like, uh, and again, there was nothing graphic in it, uh, but, and maybe this is a little bit prudish of me, but yeah, there were several mentions actually for, for in the Jamie and Jake dynamic. Yeah. There were several times when Jamie sort of resorted to the physical acts of being married and like missing that and, you know, which I totally get, you know, and, and she, she chose to not. I can't remember if it was on, on her own or if the doctor recommended it, but you know, she didn't push sexual relations while no. he was in the healing process. No, and, the, and that was doctor's recommendation. Oh, was it okay? For, uh, yeah, right off the bat, he said um, he'll need to stay in the guest room. Yeah, because he doesn't know you. Which I also thought was weird. I'm like, okay, he's the one that's hurt. He needs to be in the in the in the good bedroom, and she needs to be. They described the guest room. It sounded really nice. It sounded really nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I don't know. She, uh, I just, I didn't like all the. And again, they were very brief. Uh, I just didn't. Yeah, like it wasn't all the, anything graphic. It's not. No, I just, I think it could have been. She could have just skipped over that, and it wouldn't have. Yeah, didn't bother me. But yeah. I, I don't know if it's a guy thing. Yeah, or I mean, it's just a you know. 
I mean, I was. I, it might have bothered too. I, I, I wasn't offended by it. I just, no. I just remember thinking, this is just. We really don't need this. It's human it's, nature, you know, especially when you're married. Yeah. I mean, so sure. I, I get it. I just wasn't a fan of it. Yeah, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've read worse too. Nothing, nothing will make me put a book down faster, especially in secular fiction. Well, but even Christian fiction, I do not like it. It belongs in the bedroom behind closed doors. Nobody needs to even be there or know about it other than the man and the wife. I, so yeah, that will make me put down a book faster than anything is steamy scenes. I get that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and now you know. And now I know. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, for for readers that are listening, don't worry about it. It's, you're not going to, it's not blushworthy. That's just me being silly. No, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah. Just, just mentioning, just mentioning. Yeah, exactly. What you thinking? I'm sorry. My thoughts are very scattered today. So apologies to anyone who's listening. Um, I just want to kind of touch on, can you imagine, I thought Karen Kingsbury did a very good job with, putting to paper the emotions people were going through when they yes. didn't know where their loved one was, when they didn't know yeah, where they were, imagine. that they were that trying to hold. That's thing is that you just wanted to hug everyone. Yeah. You know, you wanted, or at least hear their voice. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I'm pretty sure I called my grandparents that night. Um, For sure. It was just, it was a very scary time. And As a collection. actually be in that city or to know someone who was on who was flying to New York city or flying out of New York city or yeah, just, we were all shell shocked by it. Yeah. And, and as a collective collectively as a nation, I think it, it kind of made us rethink relationships for a while, but can you for a while? Yeah. But imagine actually being there and being impacted by it in, a, in, in real time. Yeah. I just, yeah, she did a, a a very good job. Again, I don't, she never mentioned in the book that I know of in the author's notes or anything, whether she actually knew anybody that had been impacted personally, but I felt like she did a pretty, as good a job as anybody could do with yeah. capturing the emotions behind that without going, you know, because you have to take a sensitive touch with stuff like this because you can go overboard with it and it, get, it becomes so melodramatic that you're like, I want to puke. That's true. Yeah. So you take it too far. Yeah. And I don't feel like she did. No. I, I, th I thought it was the perfect balance of, of drama. And uh, I just, I thought she did a very good job with that. Yeah. And they, they touched on that, you know, Laura looking for Eric, um, mm -hmm. his brother play decided, you know, that's enough. We just got to go to New York city and look. Mm -hmm. And they had that hope that he was somewhere. He was unidentified. He was yeah, he's somewhere out there until finally someone just had to tell him look it's been over a week yeah yeah this isn't a rescue effort anymore this exactly is well you know and at some point in the book laura and clay which was jack no what's her, what's laura's husband name? eric she, laura and and his brother actually did yeah, go, when to, they go new to new york city and yeah they were putting up the flyers and everything and it yeah. took it took that police officer telling them it, it, you're on a wild goose chase. Yeah. It's done. Yeah. And he was very blunt with them, but I, I can't imagine, you know, what he had seen and, and the people know, he had had to deal I with. Could, I couldn't even blame him for, being, yeah. but, but I think it also at that point, that's the only thing that was going to get through. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. He's gone. Yeah. That's, you're, you're wasting your time and your, um, and even after, normal, you know, you're draining yourself and, for no reason. For yeah. no reason. Yeah, yeah. It's time to accept. But again, easier said than done, you know. And and once the, the, the police officer said that, you know, she still had that little niggling, you know, maybe yeah. he's laying in a hospital somewhere and, and just nobody knows who he is. You know, I mean, and I can't imagine being, knowing somebody that you didn't know where they were. I mean, we're talking days right. after not knowing where they are. How do you let, how do you abandon that and, hope? Right. And not everyone had cell phones. Again, there, there's, yeah. there's that. Not everyone had cell phones. I'm sure yeah. New York's phone lines were a disaster. Yeah. I don't know how easy it was to get through. Yeah. So that, and, and at that point, when, when the, you know, when they go there, the police officer says, you know, this is no longer a rescue mission. You know, this is at recovery. that point. Yeah. This is recovery. And at that point, 
that started her journey toward coming to terms with, yes. okay, Eric is, he's gone. Yes. You know, and then, and then having to deal with going home and, you know, Maybe have that conversation with your kid. Her telling, telling her son and <clears throat> yeah. But also she had the realization, which I thought was interesting that he'd really been gone a long time. Yes. Emotionally. Emotionally. Yeah. Well, and even logistically now at even, points. Now even physically, he wasn't. Because I think they alluded in the book that it was not uncommon for him to go, to be gone on a business trip for a week no. and never call home. And never call home. Yeah. Like, and they would, like, he would leave and then she would never yeah. see or talk to him again until he came home from so the business home. trip. Yeah. So, so yeah. focused on the business. Which was part of her, her turmoil because... It wasn't unusual for him to be incommunicado for a week at a time. Yes. So in her mind, this is not unusual for him. So there's still hope. Yes. Even though there really wasn't. Yes. And logically, she knew there wasn't, but she couldn't let go of that hope. Yes, that's true. So if you're a businessman, call your wife every call night. Wife. Call your Always wife. call your wife. Every Talk night. Talk to your kids. Yes. <laughs> um, on Jamie's story... I thought I was very touched by the sermon that was written. Mm -hmm. I can't remember any specific mm -hmm. portions, but there is a point where uh, she agrees to go to church mm -hmm. with Jake. Reluctantly, but she did. Reluctantly. Yeah. Um, and Sierra. And they drop Sierra off at Sunday school and then yeah. they go on to church. Because again, there was that hope that, you know, he spent so much time with these people right. at church. There was the hope that maybe that might trigger yes. some memories. And it's it's also something where you get a little glimpse of her past, what she thinks church is. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, it's been church for a lot of people. Uh, she yeah. keeps waiting for the pastor to yell at her. Yes. She's stunned by all these people who are coming up and hugging and Showing well, genuine she, concern. Showing genuine concern and yeah, all this stuff because it's it's unlike anything she's ever seen. So you're like, oh, what kind of a church was she in? Not the <laughs> exactly. best Exactly, not the best kind. Um, and the sermon really touches her and tugs at her heart. And it, it touched me as well. It was it was very well written. It was very emotional. I'm, I'm pretty sure I teared up. Mm. It, it does not move her. It should have. Like to salvation, you mean? It does move her, but she refuses. Yes. She pushes back. Yes. Not uncommon. Not uncommon. Um, she doesn't feel good enough, which is also a very common feeling. Well, I mean. So why would God want me? Seasoned Christians go yeah. through that yeah. sometimes. Why would he want me? I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough yeah. For, yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, I'm and again, just, perfectly fine to go through seasons like that. That does even yeah. as a Christian, that does not mean you're a bad Christian. That just yes. means you're human. Yes. And I just, I really wanted to touch on that because it was, it was a part that stood out to me. Yeah. It was a poignant, sermon. it was a poignant thing that she yeah, went, even though she didn't want to. And, yes. and she, but it's, it begins the softening. It does. Of her heart in that area. Yeah. Uh, and I just thought it was a, not all sermons are well written in no uh, and some in books. sermons in books are kind of like prayers and books for me sometimes I skim over them yeah 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 but this this one was very well done and yeah. I just I wanted to touch on that it wasn't heavy handed but it no. was it was it was well no, it yeah. was not mm -hmm. no it was not yeah no. I don't know what it was because like I said it's been several weeks I'm a couple of books past this one now so i can't remember at some point during the book i had a sort of a something popped into my mind that i had watched i think in a documentary or something uh, or maybe it was in an interview and like it really hit my heart to remember that so i kind of wanted to touch on that a little bit um i don't know if it'll be interesting to anyone else or not but do you remember when United 93, that's the airplane that, right. that went down in Pennsylvania. I don't, I don't know why, but United 93 is, is the plane that really, what happened to all of them was horrible. But for some reason, I have a special, like, something for those people. I don't know why. I just, for, for some reason, that one. I think so, because we know more about what went on. on yes. Airplane. Well, and at that point, they knew what yes. was going on. Yes. You know, um, 
I, I know there was horror on the other planes, even though they didn't know what they didn't know that they were the beginning of a terrorist attack. You know, but they, I mean, I'm sure they knew at, at some point that these are terrorists. Yeah, didn't know what, how it was going to turn what out. Was, what they were trying to do. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I have heard that there are actually cockpit recordings of the the terrorist in the first two planes, or at least in one of the planes where the, 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 ter- the guy that's flying the plane, he's re- reassuring the people. If you just need to sit down and, and do what they tell you, we're not going to hurt you. We're going to turn the plane around. So they did try to reassure the people, even though he was lying to them, you yeah. know? So, so there, there was, there has been some communication, but you know, by the time they got to United 93, they knew that they knew. they're on, they knew what was going on. They knew yeah. they were in the middle of a terrorist attack and Todd Beamer. Do you remember Todd Beamer? He Scott? was, is it Scott Beamer? Scott Beamer. Scott Beamer. Yes, Scott yes. Beamer. Yes, he he um, he uh, apparently everyone on the plane at that point was trying to get in touch with their people. Well, he never got in touch with his wife because she was pregnant and he was afraid that her knowing what was going on, you know, he was concerned with his unborn child, you know, yeah. and I'm sorry if I cry this. Uh, but so he instead of calling his wife, he called, I think it was 911. I can't remember. So he he got he was talking to this woman. It was either nine one one or nine one 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 patched him in to someone else. Anyway, he, he had several phone conversations with this woman down on the ground, and I think she was a nine one one operator. She, you know, she went through all this with him, was on the phone with him, and I don't think they ever hung up. It's like from the time he got her, they were on the phone until. She was on the phone with him until the very end. Uh, yeah, you know, he's the guy that's famous for saying, "Okay, are you guys ready? Let's roll." Let's roll. Yeah, and at that point, they stormed the cockpit because they're like they knew their only choice was to fight and try to right. take them down, or they were gonna they were gonna die trying, you know, uh, because that was their only choice. And so, anyways, she she he put the phone down and they did their thing, and she heard everything, you know, all the screaming and everything of them charging down the aisle and she lost contact with them, you know, when once the plane crashed and, right. and she was talking about, uh, I saw an interview with her and she was talking about how she couldn't hang up the phone even after she knew it was over because, you know, she just, there was the hope that, well, you know, maybe, 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 well, of course, at this point, everybody's glued to their television of screens. Yes. And when it finally came that, you know, of course, the plane disappeared off the radar. So they knew probably something bad had happened. But it took her like 30 minutes. Like she refused to hang up the phone. And finally, her supervisor came over. And and I think at that point, they had realized that the plane, that there was coverage of the plane, right. you know, in the field. So they knew that it was over. Yes. And I don't know, that she story. She couldn't bring she, herself to. Yeah, she could not bring herself to to end that connection. And finally, her supervisor came over, and, and he, she was like, "You need to hang up the phone now." And you know, and she said that that was the you know, with everything you know, she prayed with him. He asked her to 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 pray the the prayer, you know, the 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 Lord's prayer with her and everything. And of course, you know, please call my wife and tell her I love her, you know, and, yeah. and all that stuff. So with everything that she went through with him and just. And just the horror of knowing what was going on and trying to keep calm for his yeah. benefit. You know, she said the hardest part was hanging up that phone because she felt like just she felt like she was abandoning tie. him. Yes. yes, it was that one last tie. And I don't know why something in the book triggered that that hmm. story for me. And like I, I I can't even remember what it was. But. I had I had never heard that story. I don't think. Um, I don't know a lot about United ninety three. I know it's real. Mm-hmm. And I've heard some recordings, but I hadn't, I don't think I had heard that story. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the guys on the plane, I think his name's Tom Holland. His wife's from Arkansas. Oh. They didn't live in Arkansas at the time, but she lives outside of Little Rock now. Her name's, I think her name, is it Dina? Dina? Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. So oh. there's, yeah, she, she yeah. actually, yeah. Um. Anyway, I don't know why. I don't remember what it was about the book, but something well, about the book brought that like memory up for me. Bound to bring. Yeah. Stuff like that up. Was there any stories like that 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 sort of that you that kind of um, that the story that the book I kind of conjured? I, I, there's always a documentary I try to watch on the anniversary. Um, I feel like it's 
owed to the people who were killed. I can never remember the name of it until it pops up. Uh, it was a documentary that was, I mean, they've kind of pieced it together with this. Uh, there was a documentary maker with one of the fire stations that day, and he's that's where the only footage from uh, the first plane. Mm-hmm. He's the only one that got any footage of the first plane going into the tower. I've seen that. They were, yeah. They that were is a the, haunting video image. Yes. Um, but when Jake was at the uh, at the towers, and they were talking about the people that uh, that were like jumping. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. jumping. I there's there is a you can hear that. In in one of those documentaries, there is footage, and they're inside the building. They're already at the the base station. Um, you don't see it; you can hear it, and it's a oh wow, it's horrifying sound. You, I mean, you think for a second it's something else, but when you realize what it is, mm-hmm. it's just. I mean, it brings a whole. I can new... I can hear the sound now. It's I can't imagine being there. But them talking about it in the book, images from that documentary were just. It brought some sights and sounds to you. Yes. And maybe that's what the book, it just, it conjures the things that that, that hit you. You know, because we were all impacted by different things and different stories. So maybe the book sort of conjured up those sorts of. Yeah. uh, Interesting thing that I found out in when I was kind of looking into stuff, the very first firefighter that was killed or that they know of that was killed was killed by a victim who jumped from the building and he landed on top of the firefighter and they think he was the first firefighter that was killed by a fallen victim yeah i thought that was uh the guy the the firefighter's name was daniel sir s-u-h-r mm. and and apparently and he was killed by a mm. victim i just so sad it is sad i mean no matter just... how you died it was sad yes um yeah um uh, I want to go into a spoiler zone here in a yep. little bit, but there's one more little piece of trivia that you might appreciate okay. that I found out on the first plane. And I, I can't remember if it was, I can't remember the plane number, but it was the very first plane to hit the World Trade Center. There was a famous person on that plane. Famous-ish. Famous-ish. Um, Norman Mailer? No. What was the guy's name in Psycho that played Norman? What was that character? Uh, Norman? Bates? Yes, Norman Bates. Thank you, Norman Mailer. Norman Bates. Two very different people. Yes. What What's the actor's name that played Norman Bates? Oh, Tony Perkins. Yes, Anthony Perkins. Yeah, Tony Perkins. Perkins. Yeah. Yes. His wife was on that plane. Barry. Her name is Barry B E R R Y Barry Berenson, and she. Yeah, yeah. She. Yeah. She. He was. She. He was a, her. He was the widow. Like he was a widower. Like they were apparently were married. She was on that plane. She wasn't like famous like he was, but she had been a model and right. and she had been in I think three or four movies. So she she was kind of a notable person that was in the first plane. Yeah, there was a I don't know which plane here. Frasier or Cheers or I never watched it. Yeah, um, David Angel was one of their producers. Mm. Producers, mm-hmm. and he was on was one of the flights. Oh. Eleven. Uh, I think yeah, eleven. I think one seventy five. Him and his wife. Oh, and uh, they wound up. Well, one of the characters had a baby, and they named the baby David, and it was an honor mm. of David Angel. Oh, that's he sweet. was he was apparently a very successful television producer, but that was his biggest. I think that was his biggest one at the time. Frasier was huge. Well, yeah, that was huge. was huge. Um, another one of my comfort shows, but I I I did know that they that they were. Huh. Uh, I didn't realize that. I kind of, after I found out about Barry Berenson, I kind of did like a little Google search for like notable people mm-hmm. that died like in the planes. And she was the only one I came up with. So that, uh, so that's interesting to know that they're yeah. not that it matters whether you're a common person or oh, a famous no, person. No. It's still it horrible, matter. but yeah. Okay. So you want to go into the spoilers on? Um, what are spoilers? What was the first spoiler that we were going to talk about? Do you remember? Okay, well, I mean, the biggest one, of course, <laughs> is that um, obviously 
Jake in quotation marks. Jake. It's not Jake. It's Eric. Yeah. And they mentioned that. They mentioned that uh, when they meet. I didn't want to bring it up when I talked about when they met in the in the stair. Yeah. Well, um, they both stare at each other for a while because apparently they look just like each other. Yeah. They look just alike. Um, and what are the chances pre- of running of running alike. into your doppelganger? Yeah, yeah, there are there are subtle differences, but um, they pretty much look alike. And well, and the fact that he, this guy who we thought was Jake was actually Eric, and the fact that Eric lived with Jamie for all those di- was it days weeks, <laughs> and she didn't know that it was not her husband. Like, yeah, and I mean, she had a few doubts. She um, did, but uh, and there were explanations for all of them. There though, were, yeah, really. There were. It was um, very well you know, thought he'd out. Been burned, lost weight. He, you know, all this stuff. He'd forgotten her, so of course he maybe moves different. Or his vocal cords had been damaged, so his voice was a little different. And, you know, it was all very understandable. The first hint that it might not be Jake did come earlier than I thought the first hint to anyone else. I mean, I knew it wasn't Jake, but uh, the first hint back to another character was when he was still in the hospital and Jamie looks at his chart mm-hmm. and sees the blood type and it's yes. not his blood type. Yeah. But they but even had an explanation yeah, for that. An explanation for that is like, Oh, well that means he can have this blood. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. But it takes, it takes other people to start questioning. Well, are you sure? Well, and didn't the daughter say right from the very beginning, that's not my dad? No. She didn't? No. Oh, I thought no, she No, she was the dog. Maybe that's what it was. It was I was the like, dog. okay, the dog. yeah, the dog did I not like the him. Dog's name. The, the family dog, dog was okay once Jamie was like, it's okay, it's okay. But the dog would bear its teeth at. Which was, yeah, would not which have happened. makes sense because even though he looks like Jake. He was burned. Like yeah, he was burned. Yeah. And that's what, I mean, dogs, you know, gain sense of smell. Smells nothing like, you're not my master. Mm-hmm. How are you? Yeah. Get lost. Um, her best friend, the daughter's best friend. Asked, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Asked. Uh, who is that? Yeah. Who is that? Asked her mom. Who was that with uh, Jamie and Sierra? Which again is a, is an understandable question. If, if he's been disfigured by. Yes. But you know, still, that's for her to pick up on. It was almost kind of like a foreboding, yes. uh, you know, shadow. And then, of, yeah, then of shadowing, course they just, you know, they do and they go and do the blood test. And of course, her first reaction is shock. And then it's, my husband's dead. My husband's dead and I never knew it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is, which was heartbreaking. Yeah. And I have to give her, I was waiting for, um, the backtracking on faith, but it didn't happen. No, no, it didn't. It did, it did not happen. Uh, you almost uh, which expect surprised me. I them expected to, it to be it so angry happen. with God yes. that this didn't, you know, yes. this is not my husband. My husband is dead. For all these weeks, I thought he was alive. Now he's dead. That's the perfect reason to step away from God and say, you know what? I want nothing to do with you. Yeah. Because of what you put me through. Yes. But that's not what happened. No. And uh, to, I mean, to her credit. And again, this goes back to just the kind of person Jamie is. They've already said she's a good person. We've established that even mm-hmm. even before become, becoming becoming a Christian, she's just a good person. And she agrees. You know, well, we can't just we've got to find out who you are. Mm-hmm. So Eric stays on the condition that they don't tell Sierra because who wants to have that conversation? Right. Um, and stay there at the same time and just confuse her more. She's what, four, I think? Yeah, yeah, she's um, young. So she, she's like, yeah, you can stay. We'll, we'll be friends. And again, that... And that would be hard. It was a little awkward. That would be they, hard. They crossed that line. And they came close to crossing that line. They did. Not super close, but close enough. Yeah, too um, close for comfort. A little too yeah. close for comfort once the truth yeah. was was known. Um, and she's dedicated to helping him find out who he is. So there's all this research. And again, it's not super easy. These are still internet early days, mm-hmm. not super early days, but it wasn't still, the stone ages, been, but yeah. yeah, um, looking at, he had to have been an executive, 
if he was in the towers, he had to have worked there. But what they're doing is looking for someone who lives in New York. Yeah. And they don't even think about Because he doesn't there. realize that he, yeah. he lives literally on the other side of the country. Because that's usually what you would do is look for someone who lives in New York. You work in the towers. You Yeah. Well, no, he's there on a business trip. So it was dead ends. So it takes a while, but finally, and then that's when he remembers, my name's Eric, and wow, am I a horrible, horrible <laughs> husband and father. Yeah. And it really humbles him. Yes. But he's got this backup. And again, that comes into play again, where it's actually a good thing that she gave him the journal because he's got this Bible, but he's also got this journal journal from Jake, who, as we all know, is the best. <laughs> and he he has a way to apply it. Because yes. like I told you earlier, it's it's easy to to read the Bible and like, oh yeah, yeah. But it's so sometimes it's so hard to apply it. But to yes. have guidance from someone who did it on a daily basis. Yeah. He it's lived kind of it. a really personal devotional. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Well, and I think that was what was such a beautiful part of this story in that, again, this, this could have turned out to be a very cringe story because not, I mean, you as a wife, think about it. If you, if you were in this situation and you had this man living with you for all these weeks and you find out it's not your husband, like, especially when you realize, okay, this is not my husband, my husband's dead. Oh, but yeah, you can stay for a few more days. Like, that would be hard. And that, that could have <laughs> easily veered off into a cringe it, territory. It could have, but it, again, handled very well. Yes. And I um, think that was what was the beautiful part of the story, because in my mind, I don't know how, how it was for you, but in reading it, it almost turned into a God moment. Because if this man, if none of this tragedy had happened, and if this man hadn't showed up, and, you know, encouraged her to go to church and everything, yes. she would never have had her her no. awakening, you know, her, I don't know how you want to say it, but I mean, her, her salvation experience. Yeah, so even, I mean, that's just a, a very poignant and he, that beauty can come out yes. of tragedy. And he would never have found the error of his ways. Right. Yeah. Found who he used to be. Because again, what we find out is the reason Eric turned his back on God and was so angry at God is because um, Eric and Laura lost a baby girl before they had Josh. Yeah. Um, and Josh is, what, eight? Mm -hmm. But apparently there was a baby girl and she was stillborn. The nurse apparently told them it would have been preventable with better care, which I think is... That, yeah. That's a horrible thing to say to anyone. <laughs> Why would you tell someone that? Yeah. Especially someone as young as they were. I think they said she was 23. Yeah. Um, and that's what drives him. That's that's the crux of when he starts, well, my wife is going to have the best care and we're going to have, you know, the best house and uh, this is never going to happen again. And that's when he gets driven. It's all work. It's all. Yeah. He's. It comes from a good place. He wants to take care of everything, yeah. but he also turns his back on God at the same time. That's and he, funny. he, in the process, he estranged himself from his yes. wife and his child. Yes. So again, it was an unhealthy balance. Yes. So it's, and, and it, it works out, it works out, but um, meeting Jamie, being found and being mistaken for Jake, that Jake has changed the lives of his wife and and the stranger from LA and this man's wife and son presumably because yeah. now he is new mm -hmm. he is made new and that is a little bit there's a little bit of discomfort over in the LA storyline because Laura sort of dated yes Eric's brother Clay before before they were married Eric. and there was a little bit of uh, well, you know, and she even maybe the possibility of a relationship with Clay is what they're working around to. Yeah, at the time, and then all of a sudden, oh, Oops. cousin's alive. Ah. Not that anything happened; nothing really happened, but you know, a little bit of awkwardness there. Um, yeah. Well, and she and, even had thoughts of he can be a replacement daddy for yes, because but it's not. I don't think she loves him. 
She enough. loves him, but she's not not in not the, way, the way that she way. loved Eric. She yeah. she admits she's still as mad as she was at him, as sad as he made her. She still loved him. She loved him. She loved him. Yeah. I'm thinking about it right now. You know, and the the scene in the hot the the kind of one of the last scenes, uh, you know, because she chose not to meet. I thought that was nice. Yes. I thought that was nice. But it was, I thought that maybe. it was so heartbreaking at the same time because she basically, I mean, this guy apparently had such an uncanny resemblance to her own yeah. husband. I mean, I can, I him, can imagine how she would see her husband going away with this person, this woman. That's yes. Not her, you know? when, they, when they meet Laura at the airport and she hangs back because she doesn't want to. And what she sees is Eric embracing Laura, but he looks so much like her husband. It just, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. was that was rough. Yeah. And again, she did a very good job. Carrie Kingsbury did a very good job with this because having two men totally unrelated to each other that look that much alike each other, that the wife he's living with a with another woman and she still thinks it, that could come off as very yeah. unbelievable. Very unbelievable. In the hands of an incapable author. So again, that that, that speaks to the writing yeah. skills of, of Karen Kingsbury. She that that well. she was able to write that in a way that I don't think it came off as completely unbelievable. I agree. Yeah. So I agree. Well, it it, is there is there anything book. else? I can't uh, yeah, that's the one thing I wanted to ask you before we kind of sign off. I know we've been going a little long, but since this is your first Karen Kingsbury, what what did you think of it? Like, I liked it. I I liked it. Uh, aside from the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I I enjoyed it. I just I that was just a reaction for me because amnesia not my favorite trope. Yeah, not my favorite trope, but um, she really did handle it very well. So you you enjoyed the book? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, what what? Uh, how would you rate it? Like one one out of five stars? I'm probably a four. A four? Yeah. Okay. So would you read another? Like, yeah. Like, is it possible at some point you would probably maybe go on to the second book, or are you kind of done? Probably. Yeah. So I think I probably, probably. will too. I, I think I know where the second book might be headed. So yeah. 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 Likely. Yeah. It may be a little bit before, but I think at some point I do definitely want to read book yeah. two. Um, so, okay. Um, and you, and you would read a uh, Karen case, Karen Kingsbury sure. at some point, if you ever had the opportunity. Yeah. I think, uh, I for me, I think it would, I, I think I'd give it a pop stars. I really enjoyed it. So even though, even though there are a few things about it, I, I wasn't crazy about, I'm not one of those readers that like, I don't have to absolutely love a book to give it <laughs> five stars. You know, there are some people that if it's not the, the very top of my favorite books, then it doesn't get five stars. Um, I just, I enjoyed the book. I got a great deal of enjoyment out of it. So yeah, I think I would definitely give it five stars. Okay. Uh, Awesome. All right. Well, you want to end it here? Um, Okay. Since you're picking the next book. uh, Yes. And I don't even know at this point, you haven't even told me what uh, what book are we reading next? (laughs) (laughs) Um, See, I was nice when uh, I picked this Karen Kingsbury book. I told her beforehand that way, you know, and I she sort of told you beforehand. I just asked you about it. Oh, okay. I guess I didn't catch on that that was that you were. Yeah, that's asshole. probably gonna be the next one. She's, I'm sorry. she's left me dangling all this time, wondering which book we're gonna I'm read. Sorry, I thought <laughs> so. I've I've decided to punish Brett a little bit because this isn't the kind of thing he would normally read. But I've got some hectic stuff going on right now, and I need a little bit of a break. So we're gonna do a book that I have read a bajillion times before but he has never read it he is, he is a unicorn he has not read this book i say unicorn because most people who have read christian fiction or who, who were raised in christian households have read this book we're going to do the lion the witch in the wardrobe by c.s lewis he has also not i remember seen you the movie. mentioning it no i haven't he has also not seen the movie so i if he had seen the movie i was going to move on to something else but I'm curious to see what he thinks of it. And I'm not going to tell him anything about it other than uh, it's set uh, World War II. World War II. And it's not romance. See, I'm not a big fan on classic books either. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, for the most part, I think we're going to do pretty recent (laughs) books on the podcast. For the most part. Uh, But, yeah. I need Um, a little help right now. (laughs) Yeah. So, I'm I'm good with with, uh, checking it out and seeing how it goes. So Every um, once in a while, I'm going to throw him a curveball. 
because he needs culture. But just know for every curveball you throw me, I'm going to throw one right back. At some he point. will. I know he will. That's okay. <laughs> it's not a hard read. It is not a long read. So. And you do know if there are a hundred people listening to this, there's probably a hundred people saying, "You've never read the line." <laughs> What's it called? Line the witch in the wardrobe. The, the line. I've heard of it. I've just never. Yeah. So that's going to be our next read, and um, we'll have to figure out a date. But uh, hopefully. Today, maybe we can do that about June 7th, somewhere in there. No, June 14th. Maybe okay. June, maybe around June 14th. We'll, yeah. do, we'll do the next episode. So, all right. I guess we are going to... Do you have anything else to say? I don't think so. All right. Well, I guess we are going to let you guys go, and we will see you in a couple of weeks with the lion, the Wait, chicken... And the wardrobe. <laughs> the lion, the witch, and the you wardrobe. Know what? If you're going to mock... <laughs> We're going to mock. You know me. Yes, I know. All right. We'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining us on the Bookish Introverts Podcast, where together we explore the worlds within the pages. Until next time, stay bookish.